WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Coming up, the hidden toll of this pandemic, people losing their homes. In Charlotte, nearly a thousand evictions in the last few months of 2020. These are folks that are falling between the cracks despite what is a moratorium on evictions. We'll speak to an expert who tells us what can be done to stop what is an unfolding crisis. And later we're asking, where's the money? Making sure federal stimulus money gets into neighborhoods that often get overlooked. But first, making Charlotte a little more inclusive for folks to live in. It could soon join several cities and towns across North Carolina, taking steps in the last few weeks to protect the LGBTQ citizens. Why the sudden move? HB2. Two letters, one number, one law that garnered tons of controversy five years ago. Charlotte tried to protect gay, lesbian, transgender neighbors. State lawmakers in Raleigh stopped them. What ensued was a messy fight that led to corporate boycotts here in North Carolina and more. Now the provision that stops Charlotte and other cities from offering those protections expired. So is North Carolina now a more inclusive place? Joining me today, Kendra Johnson, Director of Equality North Carolina. Kendra, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. By my count, we've got uh, Carborough, Chapel Hill, Hillsboro, Durham, Greensboro, Orange County, all passing some non-discrimination ordinances in the, in the last month or so. Um, a lot of folks here in our area wondering uh, when Mecklenburg or Charlotte are going to be next. And I know Mecklenburg County has, has passed a resolution that doesn't really have any teeth in it. Charlotte, the city, uh, of course, knows this topic all too well and has talked about it. Um, how optimistic the, that your organization and others ca can help get these non-discrimination ordinances passes, passed in other cities? Yeah, we're really here as a, uh, to provide the information and to offer assistance. It's up to the cities uh, and the elected officials and the residents of those towns to take the measures that uh, they feel are appropriate to protect uh, multiple classes, including LGBTQ folks. Um, I can tell you that, I, you know, we're not in a hurry for folks to pass it. We want them to pass something that is um, really something that will uh, be meaningful and will have a direct impact on the lives of uh, the individuals who are most marginalized. I know that Charlotte and Mecklenburg are in discussions. We've talked um, with some of the elected officials there and there's a groundswell of community support for measures and we'll be ready and willing to celebrate um, when the city and the county takes those steps. I can remember back several years ago, I was covering city council, and this was actually before the HB2 fight. And I had um, a city council member say to me that he, he just didn't believe that gay folks or trans folks were, were discriminated against. For folks in the audience who, who, who think that and might not know a gay person or trans person, what would you say to them? I mean, I think that is a really common um, standpoint of people who don't experience um, don't experience discrimination. And just because it doesn't happen to you doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. But I can tell you that every single month, sometimes multiple times in a month, I, folks reach out to me looking for assistance because they have been fired from their job because of how they present their sexual orientation or their gender identity. There are folks who are not, uh, who are being kicked out of their ha homes uh, because their landlord takes issue with who they are, who they love. And, you know, the numbers don't lie. Um, last year, we had the highest um, number of deaths of black and brown trans women in the United States. It almost doubled last year, um, violent assassinations. So uh, anyone who says that needs to do more research, they need to talk to the community. They need to talk to their constituents to understand the realities of other people's lives. If you've been in North Carolina long at all, you, you are familiar with the fight that was HB2 uh, a few years ago uh, that effectively stopped cities, municipalities, counties from enacting these non-discrimination ordinances up until uh, December, just a couple of months ago. I want to put up, this is from uh, the Charlotte Observer editorial uh, back on the 15th of January. And it says, quote, a spokesperson for the Senate leader, Phil Berger, told the editorial board Wednesday that Berger and Republicans have more important items on their mind. No Republican lawmaker said otherwise. 
A chapter in North Carolina history has ended. This is what progress looks like sometimes, not a splashy legislative vote or a, a landmark court decision, but a, a quiet, quiet acknowledgement that things are at least a little different now. Are you, are you getting a lot of pushback when it comes to these uh, non-discrimination ordinances? Or, or do you feel like the state of North Carolina has just moved beyond this as being an issue? Yeah, I think um, we there's always pushback. There's always opposition, which is exactly why we need these measures. If you've been at any of the um, at any of the city or town council meetings when these ordinances have passed, uh, we've had a flood of people um, protesting, and it's been horrific uh, lies about the LGBTQ plus community. I think uh, I hope North Carolina has moved on. Um, and you know, you said. Uh, if we were here in North Carolina, in reality, I wasn't in North Carolina. I'm from Arkansas originally. This was this was an embarrassment for North Carolina, not only nationally, but internationally. And I would hope um, that in the midst of a pandemic, a raging pandemic, when we have so many issues um, that the whole community is facing, that this wouldn't be the priority for the NCGA to prevent cities from protecting their citizens from discrimination. What about legal challenges? Uh, you, you expect anything from the North Carolina Values Coalition or any other groups? I mean, I think we can always expect the opposition to take some kind of action. I would hope not. I would think that um, the Family Values Coalition would have its work cut out for it with families that are experiencing hunger and poverty and eviction, um, that they would focus on other issues, but in reality, um, they are always um, standing in opposition um, and coming with hateful rhetoric. So I think it, there is a possibility in order to do that, they would have to prove harm. Uh, and I can't see how um, preventing discrimination causes harm uh, to another individual. And perhaps one of the biggest uh, barometers or metrics to see if, if we progressed as a society here in North Carolina is what future legislation might look like. I, I must point out 18 states currently are trying to ban trans youth from sports, uh, 12 states trying to criminalize trans health care for youth. Um, do, do you expect similar measures to, to uh, be brought up here in North Carolina? I mean, we're seeing the same kind of rhetoric, actually, that at every single city council meeting that we've had where these ordinances have passed, they've talked about um, student athletes and all the things that cisgender women would purportedly lose if transgender women had non-discrimination protections. So these have been the talking points that, uh, that the NC Values Coalition has given uh, to its members and supporters. So I'm sure that she's lobbying some somewhere um, to try and push this legislation. But again, I hope um, that the North Carolina General Assembly uh, will not take up matters that only serve to further marginalize one of the most um, ostracized and mistreated groups uh, in, in the U.S. population. Uh, do, do you feel um, gay, lesbian, trans folks have more reason to be optimistic today here in North Carolina than they did one year ago? Certainly, I think um, the national climate is beginning to shift. Um, for So for the past five years, even in the lead up to the previous administration, the really hateful uh, rhetoric that was on the uh, campaign and then coming from the White House really um, created a situation where we saw a rollback of almost every single protection that was available for trans and gender nonconforming folks in particular, and, and serious attacks on the rights of the LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ community as well. So I think just having um, an affirming person in the White House who, who considers us human and with basic human rights in the country is already a marked improvement uh, for our lives. We still have a lot of work to do um, in order to build out these protections on the local level, the state level, and the federal level, but we have an opportunity to do so um, in this current climate, thank goodness. All right, Kendra Johnson, Director of Equality North Carolina. Kendra, thank you for coming on and talking to us, we appreciate it. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Always happy to talk about equality. You have Perfect. a great day. All right, Kendra, thanks.